In software development, it is always a good idea to have test cases that are realistic. In this demo video, we are going to take a look at how you can take the copy of production data of a containerized application and use it to spin up a test or a dev instance of the application so that the application can be tested with the latest production data. The storage platform here is PowerMax with the container storage interface. Kubernetes is the container orchestration platform and we are using GitLab for the DevOps automation. Here is a sample application that we forked from GitHub. It is a bare bones web app to manage a list of to-do items with SQLite as the backend database to store the to-do item information. And here is where the magic is happening. This is the persistent storage claim for the SQLite pod that is part of the to-do application. Here we are actually using a tag variable of the application instance to dynamically allocate the right storage volume. If the tag indicates that it's production instance, then a claim against the production volume of the storage class SC, and in a little while, uh, we'll see how to pass PowerMax as the value for SC. If it's not a production instance, then a snapshot of the production volume is used instead. If the snapshot PV doesn't exist, Kubernetes creates a snapshot of the production persistent volume and then uses it. This way, every non-production instance will have its own persistent volume that is actually the latest copy of the production data. And here is the YAML for the snapshot definition. The storage class that will be used here will be PowerMax-Snap class. Of course, SC is the variable here, and we'll see how to pass PowerMax for the variable SC. Let's see this in action. Here is the production version of the app. Let me add a few items that are, in fact, a must in today's world. Now let's spin up a dev version of this application to do some changes to the app. Before we do that, a quick check on PVCs and PVs in the namespace. You can see the persistent volume claim and the persistent volume for the production instance, and there are no snapshot volumes here. Cool. Now I create a new branch called colors, and the change I'm going to make is to change the color of the title on the web page. I can do a quick diff to make sure and then commit and push the change. This creates a new pipeline in GitLab. Let me navigate to the build. And here is the Helm command for the application deployment in Kubernetes, where we set things like a unique namespace for the instance and passing relevant variables, of course, the variable SC, which stands for storage class, is being set to PowerMax. The build and deployment are completed, and here we can see that the color of the title has been changed. And if you notice, the data is the latest production data since it's a snapshot of the production volume. Now we can go back and check to see that a new snapshot volume is created. And we can also see the corresponding persistent volume and volume claim in addition to the production objects. I can also check the Unisphere environment to see that the snapshot has been created as part of the deployment within the same storage group. This same workflow can be used for any of the Dell EMC storage platforms listed here. These are basically the respective snapshot storage classes for each of the platforms. Hope you enjoyed the video on this use case, which is also called the copy data management use case. The cool thing here uh, is with the ecosystem integration of Dell EMC storage platforms, the copy data management use case is addressed thoroughly no matter how the backend database is deployed, be it as a Kubernetes pod or a VM or on bare metal. Thank you for watching this video.